the assay is easy to convert from regular uh, qPCR. Now, um, but um, a proviso here in, with this technology, it absolutely requires TACMAN probes. It requires a, a special BioRad droplet digital PCR supermix, and you must use TACMAN probes for this assay to work properly. So, um, and and the um, the BioRad supermix has been formulated specifically to work with the droplet chemistry. Um, groups have tried using their own supermix to make this work, and it just doesn't work or doesn't work very well. So um, it's definitely recommended to use the mixes that we that we propose uh, to, to make this technology work. But again, those mixes are all are all incorporated in that two dollar two dollar and uh, two dollar and fifty cent uh, to three dollar cost per sample anyway. So so well worth it to use um, to use the optimized solutions for this reaction. So what you do is the workflow basically is you you have oil in in these wells here. So this is a little cassette to be able to generate droplets. And, and droplets are generated eight wells at a time. So you, you basically pipette oil into these wells here. Your sample, 20 microliters of sample, goes into those wells. And then this cassette goes into a droplet generator. And the droplet generator pipettes um, the mixes the oil with the sample to create your 20,000 droplets per sample. So your sample goes from essentially from this well to this well, except in this well, it's 20,000 droplets from a 20 microliter sample. And then with a the multi-channel pipette, you can transfer these droplet wells now into a PCR plate where, where, they, get, uh, where they get thermocycled. So this is what it looks like. There's a little cassette here. Uh, with, w in which you, you add your, your oil and samples, put it into the droplet generator, it generates the droplet. So your sample is now encased in oil in a one nanoliter droplet. So you end up with 20,000 one nanoliter droplets for a single sample uh, totaling 20 microliters. You can run, uh, the experimental parameters are flexible, so you don't, you, there is no microchip uh, format here. So this is another difference between, uh, between uh, the droplet digital PCR and the other digital PCR uh, instruments uh, that are out there um, where they require a chip-based method, which is much more expensive, actually. So you're talking uh, about orders of magnitude different in, ex in expense between this technology and, and what's competitively out there from other technologies, where you're talking about $2.50 to $3 per, per sample with droplet digital, uh, but with other digital techniques, you're talking about anywhere between $30 to $150 per sample, and that's just because of the cost of those chips. Here we avoid those costs because we're encasing our samples in droplets. So you can run multiple independent experiments with this technique. It's very flexible. You can run 96 samples. You can run 16, 32. You know, typically we samples are run in sets of eight because because that's uh, that's how many uh, samples the um, the cassette holds for generating droplets. But down to eight and in sets of eight is how is how these uh, these would be run. And again, the instrument uh, is. The technology is optimized to read in the FAM and VIC channel, so you can actually uh, um, PCR uh, two um, targets at once per sample as well. So that helps with uh, with increasing throughput. So you basically go, uh, uh, you transfer the emulsion from uh, the um, uh, the droplet wells into your qPCR into the wells of the qPCR plate. So a single sample that has 20,000 droplets gets transferred into a single well, and then the samples are all transferred into their individual wells, and then they are thermocycled. After thermocycling, so basically a TACMAN reaction happens, after thermocycling, each well is read by the reader, and the reader reads the wells one droplet at a time, so it reads all 20,000 droplets from each well to determine which ones have fluorescence, meaning the TACMAN reaction worked, meaning your gene of interest was in that droplet, and reading the background wells that don't fluoresce. And it just counts positives versus negative droplets. That's exactly how this works on a well-by-well -well basis. 
So each well becomes essentially 20,000 data points. And it reads uh, about 32 wells per hour. So the reading on this instrument uh, to read a full 96 well plate is about three hours. The thermal cycling is about another hour or so. So that's four hours to four and a half hours. The, and then the actual generation of droplets is about another half hour. The actual technician time in this process is approximately 30 minutes. So the rest of the time is either thermal cycling or reading the droplets. So the total time involved with this assay is about five hours, but with only about 30 minutes of technical, uh, technical time. The droplets are converted to a digital signal. So, so the instrument reads droplets as, as either having increased fluorescence or as negatives. And the positives uh, contain, obviously, at least one target, uh, one copy of the target DNA. And the software measures the number of positive and negative droplets per fluorophore. And again, as I mentioned, it reads in the FAM and VIC channel, so you can multiplex, so you can read up to two targets uh, per sample. Um, and there can be up to two targets per droplet, in effect. The instrument reads, uh, as you can see, the negatives are lower fluorescent and the positives are higher fluorescent. So this is, and um, that would be the, the VIC channel and then reading simultaneously in the fan channel for a given droplet. So you can, you can look at two targets at once. And this is the readout. Basically negative droplets and positive droplets. That's, that's how the instrument works. So very simple technology. Um, it has excellent reproducibility. So this, is, this technology, uh, and as I say, it really shines down to very low copy numbers. It has a very broad linear dynamic range. The linear dynamic range of this technology is five orders of magnitude. Uh, but but uh, as I mentioned, very, very nice in the low copy range where qPCR simply would not work well. I would not recommend droplet digital PCR uh, in, in for, for higher abundant uh, uh, targets. For, uh, you know, if, you're, if you're working in a range where, where uh, qPCR is working well, the, the, the 10 to 32 uh, cycles, for the applications that qPCR works well in, like I say, gene expression, absolute quantification, there versus not there, uh, these kinds of assays, endpoint reactions, where you have a reasonable abundance of your target of interest, in the sample, then qPCR is a good technology and it works very well. Again, droplet digital really shines in the low abundance range, and, but, as, but it is very linear across a broad range. So if you did have, uh, if you were comparing, say, a high abundance target in the same sample to a very low abundance target, then droplet digital might be the choice that you would want to make. So if we look here at the lower abundance targets, you have uh, um, you have a very high signal, lots of droplets counted in the negative, and a few droplets, as you can see, that were counted as positive. As you increase the signal, you have more and more droplets that are positive, until finally you, you end up with all positives and no negatives. So that's, that's how the technology works. It's just counting positive signals in the droplets based on a TACMAN probe-based assay. So, to look at it more graphically, this would be no targets, so you'd have droplets that are all negative, a low concentration of targets, so you have, you have droplets that become positive, and as you have medium concentration and high concentration, you have more and more droplets that are positive. As you increase the amount of target in a sample, the chances of having a single droplet with more than one target in it increase. So in, in, in the low copy range, one positive is probably one target in that positive. But, as, but in the higher copy range, you can have multiple targets in the same positive droplet. Okay? But this, the, the really, really nice, uh, nice aspect and nice feature of droplet digital PCR is that this type of random event of a target fitting inside of any particular droplet or multiple targets fitting in a particular droplet, it's a, it's a completely random occurrence. 
how droplets are formed and how, tar how a target might randomly end up in a particular droplet or multiple targets in a droplet. And because of that randomized event, this, uh, the, the, the data can be fitted very well to what's called the Poisson distribution. And that Poisson distribution eliminates the need for standard curves because the Poisson distribution has its own generic standard type of curve that, that you would fit your data to. So this is the famous uh, uh, scientist, uh, Simeon Denis Poisson. And, and, uh, and his uh, formula actually permits us to be able to very quantitatively fit uh, any data from droplet digital PCR to a Poisson distribution. So um, basically, the, 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 the reason why is because of the random distribution of independent events, and the independent event is the actual encapsulation of, of, uh, of, of your target of interest in a given droplet. So when target, co uh, and, uh, and there's no physical link that binds the molecules together, or pushes them apart from one another, which makes it a very randomized event, uh, the, where a target ends up negative or positive or a couple of positive targets in a droplet, as you see here. That fits well to this curve here. This is a Poisson distribution curve. Okay, so, 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 you, so the data is modeled to a Poisson distribution curve and it fits this formula here. So the, the number of copies in a given droplet equals the negative ln of 1 minus the fraction of positive droplets. It's a very, very simple formula. So in order to have, um, for example, in order to have, let's say, 95% of all the droplets positive, so the, this is percent, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%. About 90% would be in the middle here. 95%, if we go up, we would need 60,000 positive targets in the sample. In, in, in a 20,000 droplet reaction, so this, is, so this is, and this is always the case with, with the Poisson distribution, you need about three times more positives vis-a-vis the total number of available uh, uh, randomized events in your model. So in, in, in this case, the randomized events are droplet generation. We have 20,000 of them. So you would need 60,000 positive events, positive targets, to, to, to allow for 95% of the droplets to be positive, and, and, and anything in between. So, you know, if you wanted, if you wanted 20% of your droplets to be positive, you'd probably need about uh, 5,000 uh, 5, uh, positive targets in your sample. And so, again, it fits very, very well to this, to this Poisson distribution. So after the droplet generation has been counted, you can do the ratio of, of, uh, to figure out what P is, and then you, you will know by this ra ratio and fitting to this formula the exact number of copies per droplet. And in effect, by multiplying that by, by, um, by the number of droplets, you know exactly how many copies of the target are in your solution. So that's, that's how this works. So Poisson is a very good uh, model to fit this to, and I recommend, uh, if you would like to learn more about Poisson, go on YouTube. There's some very, very good uh, um, uh, article, um, uh, videos on how to, how to learn about Poisson distribution.